Well, folks, this is the modern era. Everything should be LED. Well, except for TVs. They should be OLED. Or actually, QD OLED is where it's at. This is just QLED, which really belongs in the trash. Actually, I really should do a home theater breakdown at some point. Anyways, so I actually put LEDs in this car a while ago, but I didn't yet film it. Um, and since then, I've actually had some go bad. Yes, it turns out these LED things that are supposed to last forever don't necessarily. You really get what you pay for. So I'm going to tell you everything that worked, everything that didn't work, and explain how Oxido came to the rescue. So I have opted to replace the fog lights, tail and brake lights, front and rear turn signals, side marker lights, license plate light, trunk light on the inside and interior dome light, potentially high beams, but more on that in a bit. What I'm not doing is replacing the headlights. My car actually came with a factory HIDs, which are very hard to replace with LEDs. And in fact, in a lot of ways are better than replacing with LEDs. The housings, the projectors are all just set up really well for this car. Now, a lot of cars come without the HID package. They might benefit from LEDs, but even that is debatable. It depends on the LEDs you get and the light dispersion. I mean, there's a lot that goes into that. There's a lot of research to be done and there are good solutions out there. I just don't have to worry about it in my car. So unfortunately I don't have a video to show you on replacing headlights with LEDs. I also don't need to do the third brake light because Mazda did that LED from the factory. The one that sits above the trunk? Yeah, I don't know why they didn't just do LEDs anywhere else. But I guess they're slow to adopt, maybe? Even Austin's new CX-5 from 2020 has incandescent turn signals. Come on, Mazda. But you might be wondering, what kind of bulbs do you need? That's a big question. I have an answer. So here are all the light bulb types you'll need to know. By the way, everything mentioned in this video is uh, linked below, and those are all affiliate links. So if you do use those links to buy whatever you need, it gives a little kickback to the channel that really helps us out with making better videos. So here's a nifty poster to help me show you what I'm talking about. Turn signals, first of all, you know, front and rear. Uh, yep, in there. Those are 7443 for the front, 7440 for the rear. Now, hyperflash is a thing, which uh, you can look that up, but basically, they can hyper flash if you just throw in LED turn signals where it's expecting incandescent bulbs because the voltage is different. Now you can do inline resistors or there's things like um, a tap turn module, which doesn't really exist anymore. Although I'm hoping to find another option because the guy who made that has unfortunately passed away. Um, or there are CAN bus slash error free bulbs. That's the route I went. They're last fit, however you say the brand. And again, they're linked below, but those are in the turn signals yet again. Now there's also the dome light and the trunk light. You know, dome light on the interior right inside there, the trunk light inside the trunk. Those are DE1, DE3175. Yes, both the same bulb. So I just got a four pack and uh, yeah, I guess I'll share my bulbs, my extra ones with someone else. Also the same bulb type are the license plate bulbs right in here and also the front side marker, which are inside there attached to the fog light. They're the same size bulb, 194, but the side marker I recommend getting amber, and then the license plate lights are of course white. There's also the reverse lights, which go in here, kind of in the middle of the rear assemblies. Those are 921. The third brake light uh, up here, kind of above the trunk, like I mentioned, is actually LED from the factory, so you don't have to do anything. In fact, I don't even know if you can adjust anything in there. It's just LED should last, last the life of the car, supposedly. Now the tail and brake lights, those are 7443. Um, and by the way, I think 7443 and 7440, I think fit the same. So I'm not really sure what the difference is, but the bulbs I got say both. Um, but they go in here and that's both tail and brake lights. So they just get brighter when you know, the brakes turn on. Then there's high beam, which are H9s. And I'm not replacing those because I've heard, yeah, yeah there's maybe errors with, uh, it throws codes for some people. I don't know. I've heard, from extensive research that's really not worth replacing the high beams. They, they project just fine and you don't use them that often. And LEDs really can throw light differently, which can be almost dangerous to other people. So I'd say leave them unless you really need a different bulb. You can experiment with that, but do your own research. And then the headlights, like I said, HIDs, I'm leaving those alone. They're perfectly fine. I'm really happy with them. And the fog light bulbs are H11, they go in there. So yeah, the fog light bulbs are yellow. 
I like the bulbs being yellow and I like leaving this clear. Some people opt to tint it so it looks yellow even when they're not on. There's no right or wrong way, whatever you prefer. But that's another kind of optional extra if you want to have another thing, which I'll still link below. Also on my list is Rust-Oleum Lens Tint, basically smoke spray. I'm going to try to spray the fog light housings, the orange side marker part with this to kind of black it out, but still keep the light visible through that tint. So it's not like fully blacking it out like some other people have done by going with the JDM fog light surrounds, which are just plastic. But as I said, the um, headlights and high beams, leaving those alone. And I've done pretty much all of these before, but I got what I paid for, I guess. My tail lights are kind of going out, um, the tail slash brake lights. So I'm replacing those with parts from Oxido. And then the fog lights were fine, but they had just a hint of green, maybe blue, I'm not sure, but it wasn't quite the tone of yellow I was looking for. So I also got new fog light LEDs in yellow or amber from Oxido as well. So going to throw all those in there. Oxido reached out to me to collaborate, which is really convenient because I decided to upgrade those bulbs and needed some anyway. So let's unbox the new stuff really quick and then we'll install it all in the car. <coughs> okay. I can already tell you these look like quality components and they just have a little bit of heft to them. So this is the red 7443 slash 7440. I don't really know the difference between those. If you know, let me know in the comments, let everyone else know. Um, but I guess they're the same fitting, but that's that for you. Looks pretty good. And we have, these look like serious fog lights. They're even like shrink wrapped. And I have just enough fingernail to get it open. Just says LED light, LED light. I like the Oxido yellow color scheme, it's nice. And slide these out. Ooh, these look serious. I mean, that's like a blade. So these are my new fog lights. Really healthy looking heat sinks right there. I'm excited to see how these look. All right. Well. That's it, super simple unboxing. Everything looks good. Looks like high quality components. We'll throw them in, see how it looks. I did take photos of my old fog lights um, and I'm using all manual settings on the camera. So I'll take photos with these after and we'll compare everything. But this looks rad. These just feel hefty and solid. I'm excited. So we have the car out here, nice and easy to look at. I'll show you guys how to get to every single bulb. I'm gonna start with right now, taking the trunk open, moving the panels out and showing you guys how to get to these bulbs. So to do the inside of the trunk, you basically have to remove these tabs and then all of these push tabs. Now not test necessarily all of them. Uh, the back can stay on, you just have to get to inside these. So you do have to take out this panel. There's four total panels. But then to get these panels out, you also have to take that out. So it's really just easier to take the whole thing out. Let's do it. Once this panel is out, you have to actually undo two cable connections back here, this one and this one. So those are for the trunk light and the trunk re emergency release in case someone gets somehow locked in there if they're that small. There's two panels. I like to take the carpet out last after all tabs are there because I kept all the tabs in the carpet and I just let them congregate there. There's all the trunk components laid out and there's the trunk all empty and such. If you need to and have aftermarket coilovers, that's how you can get to the adjustment knobs until I get the extensions. Um, but yeah, now we have free reign to access all the lights, which reverse light, turn signal, tail and brake light. This is the like relay for the LED side markers which are right in there, which actually do come LED from the factory as well, looks like. So 
That's interesting. But I'll just show you one side here. Here's the new bulbs from Oxido. All of these just twist out. So this is the bulb I'm replacing. Pop the old one out. Pop the new one in. Before I even put it back in the car, going to test it. Works, looks beautiful. That's pretty cool. Let's see how it looks when we break. Seems to get nice and bright when you break. So slide that back in there, twist to lock, make sure it locks. And then yeah, twisting these other ones is how you get to these. So this is the turn signal, the new last fit ones I got, which I think look really cool by the way. Like kind of like gold tip almost. And they're, they're a little tight, they barely fit in there, but they do fit. Just make sure you twist and lock, otherwise it'll fly out, ask me how. I know, <laughs> and this one is the little reverse light, which is the uh, 194, I think it was. But the same thing goes to this side. It's that simple. I'm not even gonna show you that. That's really uh, all there is to it. And then this is the easiest way to work on these. These just pop out, um, which I, yeah, just like that. And then this thing also rotates. And as I mentioned, that is super bright. You can't even tell on the camera how insanely bright it is. So. Like I said, my goal is to, I think, spray tint these things, which I'll probably do with the car, with them off the car. That'll be a lot easier. And that should make these a little bit dimmer because right now it's just ridiculously bright on the license plate. As I mentioned, here's the trunk light, which is the long number, I can't remember, DE1375 or something. But it is easiest to pull it off from the back. Use that clip to pop this thing out and then you can just slide the LED in inside there it's just like a really easy sliding thing i don't know how to describe it it's it's simple the same goes for the interior dome light this thing just pops off which you just get like a really small screwdriver and that bulb just slides out it's like an interesting both sides of the bulb have a, a connector it's kind of like replacing a battery almost so it just slides in there i got a multi-pack of these so i'll probably give the extra ones to ethan so i think i got four I got a four pack, but one was broken, so he can choose one LED light to have. But I really like this. It really brightens up the interior nicely, uh, you know, when you're stopped. And then I have my new ambient lighting, which is awesome. Those have their own video. Go check that out if you want to see how I install the ambient lighting. This doesn't look that clean to me. I think I'm going to hide this, just get rid of it all together because I never use this. I just use this to turn it off and on. But like I said, this is really bright, so I'm also going to use that lens tint on this. So we conveniently have Ethan's car here <laughs> <laughs> and I had a spare one of these as I mentioned earlier here's what it looks like it's kind of an interesting one side is negative one side's positive I guess and it just slides up into the assembly like that and uh that's damn it <laughs> <laughs> okay so I'm <laughs> I'm not insane. It actually was just installed wrong. You can install these incorrectly. You have to really get them centered. Otherwise it won't work. Just the way the contactors are. It's really weird. But now you've got nice ambient lighting. And if you leave your door open or something, you're not going to come out to a dead battery. Ask me how I know that's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and this just pops back in. Super easy. The way to pop it out is a thin um, flathead, honestly, or a trim removal tool. That's the official way you should do it. But this works fine. So there you go, off, on, door, auto, yeah. Now for the front bulbs, here's the HID I was talking about, very bright. And these actually work kind of as like running lights. And then when you turn the blinker on, it actually brightens up a lot. The high beams back in there, that's the one I said throws codes. And those are the fog lights that I'm going to be replacing right now. And there's the side markers. Gonna apply into lens tent this too. We'll see how that goes. Probably, would be easiest off the car, but I think I'm just gonna mask around it and try it on, we'll see. So by far the easiest way to get to these bulbs is to actually remove the bumper. Maybe not the easiest, but that's the most direct, but you can technically get to them through here. Now my tabs broke out, I'm gonna actually put new tabs in here, but I definitely recommend taking off the wheel just so you can get behind this plastic and that way you can reach in and replace the bulbs right there. Two of them both do the rotate out thing. Um, to get to the bulbs in here, 
it's really easiest to go in through the hood. So I can show you much easier with a car with a bumper already off. But here's how easy it is to get to those bulbs. <laughs> uh, you just replace them right there. And then these, you can technically go in through the top here. This does make it a little hard to work around. You can squeeze through and grab it, but you can also go up through here. It kind of takes two hands to get to this turn signal. Um, it is doable, but the easiest way for sure is to take the bumper off, take the whole light module off, which is not too hard. It's just one, two, three, four bolts, and that just like moves out. You don't have to completely disconnect it, but that's really the easiest way to get back behind these things. And then, like I said, you can still slide in and grab the bolts from that way as well. To remove the bumper, I mean, you can see that in other videos on other channels, but it's basically eight bolts across the top, 10 bolts underneath, and then back behind here, you have to take out three 10 millimeter bolts in there, and then the two main bolts inside the grill, which you access through these holes. It's as easy as that. I'm just not gonna do it on this right now. So if you're not removing the bumper, you don't have to take out all these tabs. Um, just basically one, two, three maybe, because that gives me just enough room to get in there and there you can see the fog light. So going to replace that really quick. Conveniently, these tabs are already gone because I hit a snowbank and broke them. Um, but I've got some extras, so we're gonna see if those actually fit here in a second, but time to get this fog light replaced. All right, they're in and you can't really tell yet, but I'm gonna turn them on here in a bit. And we'll see how they look. Here's the old ones, which look, I mean, they're basically brand new. Just weren't quite the shade I was looking for, but uh, we'll put them in there. Pick this up from the fancy store, Harbor Freight. We'll see if these clips work. If they do, I'll uh, put the link below because that'd be really nifty because people just, lose these all the time. I was missing one on the other side too, it turns out. I think it broke at some point. They just don't last forever, especially if you have to take your fender liner out multiple times or often. Okay, it's apparently 5 16 this one, which are these, and it fits perfectly. I mean, it feels way more solid than the OEM ones do. And it looks like they're just the kind where you just pop it out instead of using the screwdriver to rotate it. So. I actually really like that. I think I'm gonna use these uh, as they break. <laughs> so all you do is you pop in this section, and then you put this in, and that secures it very strongly in place. Yep, I'm a fan, all right. So I've got this Rust-Oleum lens tint, which uh, I guess should make these darker. So I've got the license plate lights pulled off, um, it technically says to like clean it really well. These don't look that clean, but they feel clean. Uh, I just washed my car and I don't really care how they look because you can't really see them. This is just to make them a little darker. So going to try this and see how it works. And then I also have the tiny little red push button start thing from my car because it's too bright. I still like it red, even though it's cheesy. So I'm gonna try to lens tint the back of it to make it dimmer. We'll see how that works. But it says to shake like a minute and then hold it about a foot away and then spray. Put one coat on, wait a couple minutes, another coat, like three coats total. So I'll probably do that. And then I'm gonna try to do the one side markers on the fog lights. pretty but uh we'll see how <laughs> give it that give it that two minute dry time and see. <laughs> well ventilated area yeah we always safe osha approved yeah <laughs> got it masked off we're gonna try to do it on the car no idea how well this will work but it's masked off decently here it goes mm, it's a little bit drippy i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's not going to look worse than orange is my thought, but it's fine. We'll see how it dries, honestly. 
but I'm following the instructions, so. I, but I didn't overspray too bad, so I'll go ahead and do this side too. It's masked off a little bit less intense, but. Um, ugh. Yeah, it's like when it sprays yeah. is when it like really drips off there. <laughs> so this, this is a grand experiment because this was about 20 bucks and it could let you do both. His fog light surrounds were 25 each, right? Yeah, 25 each. So I'm gonna guess the outcome is that I'm gonna regret this and just wish I had done that. But we're trying everything for you guys. Where are your, your guinea pigs? And the good news is if they get screwed up too bad, we got an extra pair right here. Yeah, which honestly, I can just wrap these black. Yeah, honestly. I have a little bit of extra wrap from the uh, windshield surrounding hood. So that's that's a consideration too. There's a lot of ways to get rid of those darn USA spec fog light reflectors. This side looks a lot better. That one looks okay. This looks terrible. This is not that good. <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad. This side's not bad at but all. It's not great. See how the other one dries? Yeah. So we have my friend Alan underscore details, which I'll throw his Instagram on screen there. He came back. You might remember him from like a year and a half or two years ago when he did my headlights. Um, I've done a lot of driving around the country since then. They actually still held up pretty well, but he was never able to get to the very edges because the bumper was blocking that. So he came back, basically redid the headlights, did Ethan's at the same time, super convenient. We had both our grills or our bumpers off at the same time. So take the bumper off, it's really not that hard. Then you can really get to the headlights. You can do a DIY if you want, but I had someone local come out, support local, you know, plus I'm lazy. But he did a great job, looks like new. So got those all cleaned up, got my fog light surrounds nicely tinted. Okay, one side's nicely tinted, the other side is tinted. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, man, the horns look good. I'm kind of jealous of Ethan's grill here. I mean, this looks freaking rad. This is the other route to take if you don't want to do the tinting, which obviously turns way better. So, <laughs> but the sport grip looks really cool. Let's you see what's inside the bumper, which is kind of nothing at, at, at the moment. But like you said, an yeah, now he wants an air cooler. Um, I could see my horns if I did that, which would be sweet because they're red just like, I guess, everything else on this car. Calipers, coilovers, door jam things, seatbelt buckles. Uh, but yeah, gonna throw the bumper back on. Then I will show you guys what it looks like at night. Right, so here we are at night. We can finally get a good look at how everything is looking. That is super bright. That's the tail light slash brake light. Looks solid. Um, I mean, I won't really know how, <laughs> how great it is until I live with it long term for a bit. The LED license plate light, as I mentioned before, uh, was overtly bright and it's still pretty bright. Let's see, nope, doesn't let me open it. It's a weird coating thing with Mazda, but um, you can't open the trunk wirelessly while the lights are on, it's really weird. These definitely better now that they're tinted a bit. Although honestly, I might tint them more. It's still really a bit too bright for my liking. I'm just trying to think like if I do nighttime photography of this car, then that could be a bit too washed out for my liking. As we come around front here, sorry for the wind, there's the fog lights, which look great. Um, definitely yellow. Honestly, it's still kind of a little bit of a like barely green hint or blue, 
or whatever is making it less yellow. I think I like it a bit more amber, but it looks great. Um, and I'm honestly a fan. I like the light dispersion. I think they look really good. They do the trick just fine. Um, and I do like them better than what was in there before. So they, yeah, they look good. And uh, oh, that looks rough on this side. <laughs> on this side looks really good honestly like you can't really tell it's still I mean, you know protective at night but in the daytime is when it looks darked out blacked out and there's the interior dome light ignore the uh beeping but that's how that looks which also looks really great so opening the garage fire this back up the last thing i mentioned was i you know sprayed the inside of this <laughs> light thing and it did help, it is dimmer now, so not quite as like ridiculously bright in my face. Um, yeah, I don't know, it doesn't really bother me. Definitely helped, I'll just probably leave it. And a quick update on my interior ambient lighting. I just put them at 1%. I love, honestly, I just love this whole image. Red gauges, red lights on the steering wheel, red things down here, this thing's red, of course, the floor is all red everything's red which was never my original plan but it'll work so thank you so much for watching and uh being along for the ride replacing everything almost everything with leds let me know if you have any comments down in the questions below the other way around uh let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and uh yeah that's pretty much how to replace everything it's really not that hard all the LED bulbs are pretty simple to get to. You have to take out, you know, the trunk liner, some fender weld liners. It is easier to take out the wheels. I have technically replaced the fog lights without even removing the wheels. You can get creative, but that just makes it easier. So thank you, Oxido, for the fog lights and the tail lights. And um, yeah, hoping to maybe replace more of my bulbs with offerings from their website, including possibly the um, switchback DRLs for the front. That's an intriguing solution. I didn't really think about till right now, so going to go enjoy my summer tires which means we'll probably get snow again in like five days that's how it always happens but uh till then coffee cheers peace